to go on. And I'm going to ask him to look at Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 17. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 17. But while he is looking for that, I want to give you another example of what God wants to be. God wants to have, this is all about a relationship with God. You must have a relationship with God. And this is describing what type of relationship you are having with God. All of us know about relationship. You have some form of relationship. Your parents, your brothers and sisters, and those of you who are a little older with your wife or your husband. And you know why it's so important relationships are. And relationships can be classified according to the quality of the relationship. God worked with us to have an intimate relationship with each and every one of us. Amen. Close that nobody or nothing will get between you and God. Wow. He wants to have an intimate relationship. He don't want you to put nothing before him. Nothing should get between you and God. That's why he said, I am a jealous God. Yeah. And suddenly many here know what it is when you feed for your wives and somebody can kind of put the horn on and feed your wife, how oh, jealous you feed. <laughs> they want money or opposite too. Nobody said one about a friend with a husband. You get jealous. God said he is jealous about us. He don't want nothing or no person getting between you and him. He loves you that much. He he looking for you that much. You are so important to him. He don't he want to safeguard your relationship. So God wants to have an intimate relationship. When you are close with God, the enemy will come. You can imagine, I want to I'm going to an example for you. Tell me this, tell me the truth. I'm going to, I'm going to use Pastor, Pastor Face Roy as another example. You think that tonight, any of you are here, you are going to tell Lorraine, ain't he with Pastor Face Roy? You're wrong. <laughs> she ain't going to believe it because they, they, they're too intimately involved, too close. So you're going to come down. Nothing to get between two of them. I'm just showing you that. And the word of God said, maybe tonight, Face Roy will walk in onto her. Close. Closeness. That's where that are nothing, not even the wind can get between them. That's the way God wants us to be with Him. Have a close relationship with Him. Nothing or nobody get between you and God. Now, let's move on to diligently. Psalm, sorry, Proverbs chapter 8, um, verse 17. What's that? I love them that love me, and those that see me early shall find me. And we should, those that see me early shall find me. I want to say to you that that's so simple. But if you do not, there come a time when people will not be able to find God. They will be looking for Him. If you check the Bible, you have the Israelites and the people at one time. For over 400 years, they're, they're knocking the head. They're looking for the Lord and they just cannot find Him. They, they, God didn't communicate with them. And it's so simple. Now is a time that you can just right now make this decision and you can find God. But there will come a time, as hard as you try, God will not be found. And it said here in 17, I love those that love me. My, my Bible trans, translated this way. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. Those who see me, that's the King James Version. Those who see me how? Diligently. What diligently means? That they're in the space yeah. is first class. The primary thing always on your mind is God. 
Every tear for you is gone. God, God will do this. I want to carry Lord. Every all your business, God is in it first. You got exams to set, you got problems, give it to God. God will help me. God is at your side. God will strengthen me. You are not going through this world alone. You are going through this world with God. Every time, every place, anything is you and God. You are with him diligently. Not sometimes, not part-time. God ain't want a part-time seekers. God want diligent seekers. Diligent seekers is who you're looking for, not part-time. You can answer that or not. You are part-time. And I want to say to you, God want you to be continuously seeking him. He want you to be diligent seeking him. And you want to have an intimate relationship with you while you're seeking him. I want to tell you that God want you, in other words, I want you to look at, I want you to look at 2 Chronicles. 15 2. And then we're going to look at 2 Chronicles 25 2. I want to say to you, God want you and I, this is one word, to seek Him fully. Fully. No space. Every aspect of your time. Now, I want to say two things to you. If you are a Christian tonight, and you have seen the Lord and accept the Lord, and you are only a, a bench warmer, that is what and where you will get. We just describe you the activity. However, I want to tell you that there are certain blessings that you will not receive. You will not get those blessings. That is why the church is regarded and looked at are having the power, having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. Because there are too many of us who come only to the church religiously. But God wants us to see him fully. And I'm going to refer to two scriptures in the Old Testament which will bring this out. And you must understand it. I am saying to you, that there is room always at the cross for all of us. There is room every day. And do not suffer from righteous indignation. Don't think that you have arrived and you got it all. You ain't got nothing. That's the trick of the enemy. Hallelujah. Humble yourself and come before God. Yes, Lord. Know that all that you have received before, you have only received it because of God. Grace. Not because of yourself. Thank so you. you're greater than the body. You are bigger than the body. All of us need the blood of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Come down, come down, my yours. Offer, get down. And if we get down of our prayer the horse, we will have better relationships. Yes. Because I have no right to, I don't have no strength or no authority to lord over you, to look up for you and treat you otherwise. Because you are just as great as I am in Jesus Christ, if you're not even greater. Mm. So therefore, I respect you, so that I speak to you with a form of godly love. So I grant you respect, and I expect the same from you. And if we start to function and live in that way, there is no room for the enemy. Humble ourselves and live in the love of Jesus Christ and stop getting on with all the foolishness. In addition to that, whatever you're doing and wherever you're doing it, do it for the glory and the name of Jesus Christ. Stop doing things for yourself. For you want to get you tight and you beg up. You beg up no way. Do things in the name of the Lord. And express your love for the Lord and whatever you do it, do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you will see a lot more things within the church. Yes. The Lord start looking at him and start looking at she and start looking at this. When God is going to bless you, he don't tell you, hold on. Hold on a minute, I've got a blessing for you. But I can't do it. I've got to call sister and our sister Mary. 
You don't do that. Each and every one of us have a separate account with the Lord. And he treat us separately. Deal with God that way. Give him back what is due to him. Jesus. By living your life out in Jesus Christ. That's right. So we now we look at, I want to look at 2 Chronicles which we have there. Um, 52 and it said there um, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye, Asa, and all of Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while you are with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. If you forsake him, he will do what? He will forsake you. There are blessings that you and I cannot receive if we do not continue seeking the Lord. I want to look at 25, verse 2. Now look at this one. Let us learn from this. Okay? <coughs> we have a king here. 25. Look and see what the Bible says about him. He and he did what that which was right in the sight of the Lord. But you, you, you understand that? That he was doing things what is right in the sight of the Lord. But something was wrong. But not with a perfect heart. So even though it appears, uh, even though he was doing right in the sight of the Lord, Amazia was 25 years old when he became king. 25 years. But he waited 20, 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Johanada of Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. But I have him, but not with a loyal heart. We can do things, but we do it for a different motive, a different reason, and not for the Lord. And all those things that you do, even though they may be right, they will not be counted for by the Lord. So don't worry, it appears to do right. The only way that you can make sure what you're doing is right and you're doing right is to see God Amen. fully with your heart. Give God your entire heart. And do not be carried away with it. You go to see this. You look good. You be in your praise. You do good. You play the piano good. You do this good. But your heart, you're holding all of God's glory. And you can't really praise it yet. They're ready. You can't get paid twice. Let the glory be unto the Lord. The Lord in due course will pay. Last but not least, I want you to look at John chapter 4. I think in verse 23. The last point I want to make you hear is that you alone is not seeking. God is seeking for you too. You, are, you alone is not looking. While you are looking, God is also looking too. Oh, remember the prodigal son? When he come out and looking for the son, yes. God, like that father, yes. is looking for all of us. He is seeking us. And Jesus Christ made it pretty clear. When we look at John chapter 4, this is a, this is a verse that all of us know. A very familiar verse that most of us know. In John chapter 4, when he was talking to the woman at the well, you know that verse. The woman at the well. Do not, tonight, do not sit down, sit back, and remain in the state that you are in. John chapter 4, verse 7. But the hour cometh, and now is, that the true worshipers. Shall worship God, worship the Father, how? In spirit and in truth. Yes. Why? 
For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Mercy. Tonight, tonight, tonight. you can tell me how you're going to continue to worship him. Are you going to worship him in spirit and in truth? Are you going to seek after him with your whole heart? That is what the Lord asks us to do. Seek him. Seek him with spirit and in truth. Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the word, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the word. Amen. And we sat and we listened to our pastor. We listen attentively as we bring this service to a close. As we bring this service to a close, we're going to stand and we will sing the song. I give myself away. Great song, leader song. If there is anyone here tonight who do not know the Lord Jesus as their Savior, or if there is anyone here tonight who may be caught between two minds, or if there is anyone here tonight who realize that where they were before, they are not seeking God anymore, we are just going along. Tonight can be your night when you can go out and look back for him and seek him again because he's there looking for you. He's there looking for you with open arms. We all know the story about the prodigal boy who went and spent all that he had. But the father loved him so much. Despite he broke the father's heart. Every day the father will get up and go out there looking for him. Seeking for him. Because the father knew within his heart that his son is going to come back home. Tonight could be your turn. If you've wandered far away from God. The opportunity is for you tonight as we sing this song and you need to come closer and have a closer relationship with God. If first of all, if you don't know him as Savior, the opportunity is now to come forward. Secondly, if you've wandered from him, Father is up here looking for you with open arms. The opportunity is now as we sing this song for you to come forward. Jesus, yeah.